So we will talk about uh, three kind of blocks things. First is uh, GDI, JM, HPI indexes. Uh, as Andre mentioned, it was a number of uh, attempts to, to adjust uh, HDI and to take into account various uh, things. Uh, three most uh, stable uh, things created in this process were GDI index, GAM, and HPI. Next, uh, I will talk a little bit about non-UNDP work uh, about correction GDP as a proxy of societal progress. And I think it could be interesting for, you, for those of you who are interested in sustainability and things like that. Third block uh, will be about multiple deprivation measures and things related to social exclusion. Uh, GDI, gender-related gender index. As we discussed, uh, human development index don't take into account uh, differences between different groups in society. And uh, first thing, first division, uh, which you could imagine, is women and men. Uh, GDI index is... Uh, is a H, in fact, a human development index corrected by uh, penalized for difference between women and men. Uh, it doesn't take into account who is in better position. So if you have, uh, if you have life expectancy lower for men than for women, it will penalize for this difference. Uh, yes, um, so, um, in fact, the bigger difference between GDI and H, uh, Human Development Index, the bigger are differences in achievements. Uh, it measures achievements, uh, so it measures outcomes, uh, kind of, uh, for women and men. And of course, there is a great question how you measure GDP for, for women and men. Uh, it uses special procedure which take into account total GDP. Uh, it take into account ratio of female and male uh, non-agricultural wage and uh, share of women and men in uh, economically active population. Uh, again, this is kind of approximation uh, based on the best available data. Hmm? Uh, second index is gender empowerment measure. If GDI measures outcomes, uh, GEM measures... Um, opportunities. So it measures inequality in three dimensions. Uh, economic participation, uh, political participation, and control over economic resources. Uh, as indicators, it uses four indicators. Uh, women and men share of parliamentary seat, which is proxy for political participation. Uh, women and men percentage uh, as senior officials and managers and percentage of professional technical positions, these two indicators used as a proxy for economic participation. And third is estimated female and uh, male earned income, which was calculated for GDI. Okay? So it says uh, what, is, uh, what is inequality in these opportunities. Uh, GEM index was criticized quite heavily because it's very hard to uh, read. And in addition, this political participation is quite questionable. Uh, why parliament? Uh, not all countries are parliamentary republics. So like that. Uh, does political participation uh, means participation in parliament? Uh, I remember history when uh, I remember story when the head of uh, speaker of Moldovan parliament was a woman, and uh, our colleagues had very hard time to push gender equality law through this parliament because they simply were not interested in gender issues. So uh, that's a lot of questions. And while GDI is more widely used, GEM is more often criticized. Uh, Next is human poverty index. Uh, this is an attempt to move from uh, income-based poverty to a more multidimensional poverty. Uh, it includes, uh, there are two indexes. Uh, one is for developing countries and one is for developed countries. Uh, it uh, takes into account uh, deprivation, in kind of deprivation in a number of dimensions and it's calculated in a percent. So as a result, you will get a percentage figure. Uh, one is a uh, percentage of people not expected to survive to age of 40. 
this is indicator is linked to uh, life expectancy at birth because both of them are calculated on the base of uh, mortality data. Uh, second is adult literacy rate. Uh, so um, percentage of uh, popul adult population who are illiterate. Next is population without access to safe water and share of underweight uh, children. This is first indicator is for developing countries. Uh, as you see, this uh, indicator have a deprivation connotation. So it shows the percentage of people who are deprived from these things. Contrary to human development index, which have a uh, kind of advanced flavor and uh, the bigger eat the better society. Uh, here we have also uh, quite uh, a lot of questions. Uh, first of all, uh, percentage of people not expected to survive to age of 40 in uh, countries of region is quite low. Uh, mortality problems uh, typically start at a later age. Um, population without access to safe water is a big question is what is access to safe water. Uh, there is an international definition of uh, uh, access to 20 liters per day in uh, one kilometer range, something like that, but it's a little bit different uh, from what you expect uh, uh, in our societies. And in many cases, uh, access to safe water is redefined. For instance, uh, we define, we, have, we had to define, uh, in one case, uh, access to safe water very differently for urban and rural areas because in urban areas they had problem with supply of water. So they have uh, that post-transition country with very huge problems with infrastructure maintenance. So they have pipes, but they have no money to pay for electricity and they typically have water two or three hours per day. So we define lack of access of safe water as a number of hours they have access. Uh, it could be a huge question about quality of this water because, uh, for instance, in the uh, case of uh, rural Moldova, Ukraine, uh, most reliable source is well. But according to uh, data, most of these wells are contaminated. So they feed to this requirement of 20 liters per day, but quality of water is very questionable. So uh, if you would like to use this indicator on country level, you have to both probably have to redefine it. Uh, human poverty index for developed countries uh, push kind of bar a little bit higher and now it's a population of not expected to survive to age of 60, share of population who are functionally illiterate, so not simply literacy, but functional literacy, that's mean ability to use your knowledge. Uh, uh, instead of uh, underweight uh, as a kind of extreme uh, uh, malnutrition, they use population below income poverty line, and if I'm not mistaken, they use relative poverty line. Uh, and they add fourth dimension, which is exclusion, uh, and they proxy it through long-term unemployment. Uh, the argument is that if you are not in labor force, your lack of incomes, uh, you're kind of excluded, and uh, this is... Uh, yes, that's three indices which are used as an addition to human development index, and that's three are most popular. Well, first of all, yes, it makes sense to try to disaggregate, uh, as it makes sense to try to disaggregate everything you can, uh, everything you have. If you would like to stick to human poverty index methodology, it could be not the best uh, methodology mm -hmm. to take. Uh, why? Because it's uh, designed to uh, be uh, cross-country comparable. And it tried to fit all different countries in one uh, framework. That's why it could be better for you to try to calculate multiple deprivation on the level of, of, uh, the level of country and subnational level using indicate other indicators which are more relevant for your conditions. We will come to it a little bit later on. Okay, um, it was a number of attempts to, uh, to recalculate uh, GDP index to take into account, uh, dif uh, to take into account uh, these hidden costs we don't take into account typically. We have GDP in monetary term and we have this unobserved cost of future uh, generations we don't take into account. 
One attempt is index of sustainable economical welfare. Uh, it takes personal consumption and starts penalizing for bad things uh, and um, adding for good things. Uh, it adds public non-defensive expenditures minus private defensive expenditures plus capital formation plus service from domestic labor minus cost of environmental degradation and minus depreciation of natural capital. And for instance, this is Austrian uh, I'll take an example, uh, Austrian uh, index of sustainable. As you see, GDP is growing up, but after a certain point, uh, uh, this index is stagnated, uh, which means that this growth of uh, GDP is uh, kind of imaginary, and you have uh, this uh, quite huge uh, unobserved costs of future generations. Uh, Genuine progress indicator is an uh, additional uh, kind of further step in uh, design, uh, in uh, development of this uh, uh, sustainable uh, welfare indicator. Uh, they adjust it for a number of uh, different things. Uh, they say that um, uh, they pe penalize it for unequal income distribution. Uh, they add housework, volunteering, and things like that. Uh, that's, by the way, to the question of uh, inclusive society and equal society. Um, they pe penalize for crime. Uh, they penalize for pollution. Uh, they penalize for long-term environmental damage and so on and so forth. Interestingly, they also add um, uh, penalization for lifespan of consumer durables. In other words, they say if you buy product of low quality, uh, which have very short lifespan, and you throw it next day, you imaginary inflate your GDP because you produce a lot of garbage, you throw it out quite quickly. Uh, so they add this uh, lifespan. Uh, they also uh, add this uh, debt component, which they called dependence on foreign assets. And this is a uh, genuine progress indicator for United States of America. And you could see that trends in GDP and GPI are completely different. After a certain point, I think after 80s, mid 70s, GDP was growing steadily, but GPI is decreasing. Uh, you will have links to these uh, publications uh, and you could learn more about them because uh, I think these reports are available online. Um, another approach uh, is to adjust uh, national savings to uh, future costs and future benefits. Uh, this is uh, explanation. Um, you have general gross savings and then they start adjusting it for uh, depreciation of fixed capital, increase it by educational expenditures because it's kind of investments in your future, minus depletion of natural resources, mi minus pollution damage. So it's another approach, and I think World Bank using it since 2002, and they have quite a good manual on how to do this. So we could go further. Okay, that was quite a quick review of things, and another thing, um, OECD now, have, uh, now has quite a big global project on measuring progress of societies. Uh, they put very huge question, uh, is life getting better? Uh, what progress mean for different societies? Uh, how we could measure it? How we could prove that our life is getting better? Or we, how could we indicate it is getting worse? Um, and they come out with three big kind of streams of work. Uh, first stream of work is what to measure. It's basically your discussions. What are the components of human development uh, index? That's uh, group uh, two, yes? Your group was doing. What are the dimensions? Uh, so, yes, health, education, it's more or less clear. Uh, environmental, it's long. Uh, but what about governance? What are the things? Uh, second is how to measure, and this is a uh, huge debate about subjective, objective uh, things, uh, how we get this data, and so on and so forth. And they have third, 
which uh, stream of work, which is very important, is how to ensure that these measures are used. Okay, we could calculate some index, so what? How we use it? And uh, that's that's most problematic thing. Uh, we uh, constantly face with situation when quite a sophisticated, interesting things are not used uh, in practical work. And uh, I think it's very important uh, to involve not only uh, scientists who could invent something sophisticated, but also policymakers in this. Uh, as I told you, there is always this attempt to, uh, there is always this discussion, should I have one indicator or should I have a long list of indicators? Uh, it should be certain uh, kind of compromise, certain consensus, what you could have for practical purposes. Here's a link uh, to website, and they have quite interesting knowledge database uh, in which you could uh, have a look what is uh, going on, uh, what are the possible approaches. Um, that's the taxonomy uh, of societal progress they came out at the moment. Um, they have uh, six huge, big components. Uh, one is ecosystem conditions, uh, what is going on in our environment. Uh, that's land, uh, fresh water, and so on and so forth. Uh, second block is human well-being, and that's very various uh, dimensions of human well-being, starting from uh, health uh, and including material well-being. They also include work and leisure, so on and so forth. Uh, interestingly, they have very small block on economy, uh, which include only uh, um, national income and national wealth. Uh, governance, uh, human rights, access to services, security and crime, and so on and so forth. Culture and resource use. Uh, in resource use, they uh, focus on pollution and depletion of uh, natural resources. They call it resource... Uh, resource extraction and consumption, okay? By definition, HDI is the same methodology for developed countries and developing countries. And this is the power of this indicator because uh, you could compare between them. HPI, Human Poverty Index, yes, it uh, make difference for countries because uh, life uh, percentage of people not surviving to 60 in uh, developing countries could be very high and not surviving to 40 in developed countries could be very low. So it's, uh, that's huge differences. But HDI, by definition, should be for everybody. That's the power of this indicator. Uh, no, but the argument is uh, that uh, that's the same things people value in developed countries and developing countries, to be healthy, to get knowledge and to have decent uh, life, uh, decent level of life. And that's why uh, indicator which are used uh, for HDI calculation are the same. Okay? So that's, that's the same thing people value in United States, in Kyrgyzstan, in uh, Morocco or whatever, to have a healthy life. And the best available indicator of healthy life is life expectancy how long you expected to live if current mortality, uh, current mortality level stay here. Yeah. And with uh, enrollment and literacy, it's the same. You value knowledge, and the best possible uh, way to measure your knowledge is if you could read or write, and if you could get access to education. Okay? So for HDI, it should be no difference. For human poverty index, yes, it's, Okay, uh, now we are coming to multiple deprivation uh, measure, and uh, uh, we are coming back to definition that development is a process of expanding freedoms that people value and have reason to value. But the question is how to measure all this. One approach could be poverty, which is typically it's monetary and focus on incomes and expenditures, but use only one dimension. Uh, those who don't have money, they're poor. Those who have money, they're rich. That's all. Uh, HDI add longevity and education to these dimensions, and uh, human poverty index, which is kind of deprivation measure, simply 
a lot of, also on these dimensions. MDGs a little bit expanded this list by nutrition, uh, different aspects of health, education, gender equality, and environment. Uh, but there is a critical problem here that there are a lot of things people value, but uh, we cannot uh, uh, we cannot get data on this. And I think uh, we had the discussion on political participation this morning. Uh, that slide showing why we should go beyond uh, simple poverty. Uh, that's com that slide coming from one uh, recent presentation. I think you well know why we should go beyond poverty, but I would like to reiterate it. Uh, if you have your society, and it's five people in your society who have different incomes, uh, the, only, the only thing you judge by is poverty line. Right. Everybody who have uh, incomes or expenditures beyond poverty line are poor. And you, an answer is that you should concentrate only on this small group. In, the, in this case, it's one out of five persons. And that's all. We don't care about problems of that guy because he have uh, enough money to solve his problem. However, if we look on social exclusion in many dimensions, uh, so that's kind of pictures of different dimensions. Incomes, savings, labor, housing, access to information technologies, security, uh, education, health. So this guy is okay. He has problems with savings. Maybe he's going to party out too often. That's why he spent all his income and have no savings. But generally, he is okay. And this guy have no work, he have no money, and he have no savings. But on the rest, he is okay. Uh, he have house, he have a laptop, his community is uh, his community is safe. Uh, he could go to school, and he have access to health services. And who is here? His lady. And gender, huh? Well, and this is a little bit different case. She has no job, but he, uh, she uh, has income, she has savings. <laughs> well, uh, she, she has housing, but she, she is living in distant community, which have no access to internet. It's quite unsecure community. They have no school, they have no health service, right? So she has incomes, she has incomes, but she has no access to these important things she value, have a reason to value. And who is here? Yet another lady. Uh, has job, but no good incomes, maybe it's low paid job, no, uh, no savings, bad house, no internet, okay, secured community, no access to health services. And this is quite an okay guy who have no problems at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have somebody cheerful in our society. So uh, in this case, if you look only one, on one dimension uh, of uh, exclusion or deprivation, uh, you have completely different picture if you look on other dimensions. So this lady on the third line, she's completely out of picture uh, because we don't look on this dimension. Okay, uh, there is a, a recent uh, so-called Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative, and they decided to have a look on these missed dimensions of poverty. And they identify four dimensions of poverty they would like to measure, okay? One is employment. They would like to look on both formal and informal employment, and especially on quality of employment. Uh, their initiative is quite wide, and I think they tend to work more in Asian and African uh, context, but they have uh, some activities also in our region. And I think quality of employment is very, very important in our region. Uh, when we did um, this survey of Roma, 
we find out that subjective unemployment rate for them is much higher than uh, objective uh, IOM condition uh, unemployment rate. Because uh, IOM uh, ILO says you are unemployed if during last week you had no uh, paid job, you are ready to start job, uh, and you are looking for job, right? They have jobs. They have daily jobs. They come and get some job to do during the day. They get cash and so on and so forth. But they don't perceive it as a employment because it's very unsecure employment. So they try to look on this area. Uh, another area is empowerment or agency. Are you capable, uh, do you have an ability to do whatever, you, uh, to advance things you want? So it's kind of self-initiative. Could you uh, do this? Or are you totally oppressed and have uh, no power to do things? Uh, physical safety. Is security from violence to property or to individual? Uh, and also they look on perceived violence. Next is uh, they, they formulate it as ability to go about without shame and it's uh, dignity, respect, uh, freedom of accumulation, uh, that sort of things. Um, another block which is not uh, exactly a dimension of poverty, but um, an important for understanding of this is uh, what, uh, what is your meaning and what things are value? And uh, what is your satisfaction and what are the determinants of your satisfaction, which is coming closer to this uh, satisfaction level. Uh, when uh, there is a link, here and you could access and they have a lot of lot of different working papers starting from general papers describing how they would like to approach different areas then specific papers in each of these areas and then results of practical work in different countries so that's very rich resource for your research and i suggest you go there uh, when you start multiple deprivation uh, or poverty analysis you uh, should answer a couple of questions. One question is, what is your unit, unit of analysis? This is person, this is household, and in very rare, rare cases, uh, is it community? Uh, for instance, if you don't have a kindergarten or, uh, or school or medical facility in your community, whole community is deprived. Yeah? So how you could, uh, how you could be, uh, how you could access to, uh, how you could have access to health services if you don't have uh, this uh, in your community. This community layer is very rarely uh, analyzed, but I think it's very important. Next is uh, order of aggregation, how we do aggregation. We aggregate first by people or by dimensions. So we look, we look on one person and look on how many dimensions he or she is deprived and then put a tick mark deprived, non-deprived, or we look, uh, we combine all people uh, deprived by dimensions and see how many of them are deprived in dimension A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, how you choose dimensions? I think you have quite tough discussions during this morning uh, how you choose dimensions. And there are a lot of there are a number of uh, ways how you could choose. One is participatory process. Ask people what, what they value or have reason to value. Um, next is a kind of consensus list. Uh, that's MDGs, national plan, human rights. That's kind of consensus process which comes with certain list of things. Uh, next is theory. A researcher could sit down with a cup of cappuccino and decide that oh, political participation is important, uh, economy is not important, and social things are important. Um, also, in far, far too many cases, dimensions are limited by data availability. So we simply measure these dimensions and we go with these dimensions while we have other dimensions which are important, but not measurable. Next is what are variables and indicators for each dimension? I think that's exactly your problem, uh, was your problem during morning presentation when you Say, said, oh, we would like to look on uh, corruption, but we don't know how to measure it. What, 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 how could we measure it? Uh, 
What is poverty line in each dimension? What is cutoff line? Uh, access to safe water. What is cutoff line? You should have access to this water 24 hours per day, 16 hours per day, five hours per day. Um, and question of weights. Are we weighting indicators within dimension and between dimension? That's a huge question Andre talked a lot uh, about during HDI. Uh, that's a process of uh, calculation of multiple dimension. Um, in case of only dimensional, you have uh, just illustrative example. You have certain income uh, for four people, right? 100, 250, 500, 125. You put a kind of poverty line at the level of 190. Uh, these two persons are deprived because they are below this line. You calculate deprivation vector and you could calculate gap vector. So that's kind of this guy deprived, not deprived, not deprived, deprived. Gap vector is a, di a distance to this poverty line, right? Uh, this fourth guy is less poor than first guy because it's, yeah, it's clear or it's too sophisticated. Okay, uh, then we count those who are uh, below poverty line. We could calculate gap and we could uh, estimate how much resources we need to pull those poor to poverty line. In case of uh, multidimensional, we have a number of variables. And in this case, uh, to this income variable, we add employment and access to water, right? Uh, second column is a uh, uh, answer to question, how many hours of work did you have, uh, of paid work did you have during last week? First guy had 16 hours, second had 40, but get 250. Next one had uh, 36, but get 500. Uh, last one had 38. Uh, access to water, how uh, much hours uh, during day you have access to water in your household? 8, 9, 24, 12. Uh, we set cutoff line, which income below 190, less than 35 hours of work, uh, less than uh, less or equal to 12 hours per day access. Again, we calculate deprivation matrix and we calculate gap matrix, right? And here come a question, well, head count and gap. Here come great question. Who of them are deprived or poor? Uh, this first guy who deprived in all dimensions, second guy who deprived in one dimension, or this what guy who, or first and fourth guy who deprived in two or more dimensions. So that's that's question you should answer to who are deprived, how we uh, how we define deprivation. Uh, is it deprivation in only one dimension? Is it deprivation in all dimensions, or is it deprivation in more than half of dimensions? Okay, uh, because in this case uh, we will get completely different figures. Uh, in one dimension we have. Uh, in at least one dimension, we have 75% of deprived, right? Because first, second, and fourth guys are deprived, at least in one dimension. In all dimension, we have only 25% of people deprived. This only first guy are deprived in all dimensions. And if we go with car equal to two, we have two guys deprived, it's 50%. So that's a question of arbitrary choice, and you. Okay, coming to more exciting country examples. Uh, Macedonia, Poland, Moldova, and Croatia. Macedonia, they did multidimensional vulnerability. They look on person in household. So they look on two levels of deprivation, household and person. Uh, they decided to uh, not uh, to play with weights. One dimension, one indicator. All dimensions are equally important. Uh, and to avoid this uh, hard discussion on is it deprived in one dimension, three dimension, they used kind of scale. They say uh, level of vulnerability, low, medium, and high. Uh, low is less than three dimensions, medium three to six, high is six and more. They had eight dimensions vulnerability. 
And they looked on combination of vulnerability. They look on vulnerable individuals and vulnerable households. And they look on, uh, yes, they look on uh, kind of crossing of this. So they had people who live in vulnerable households. They have vulnerable individuals. And they have these hardcore uh, vulnerable individuals, which were 15%, I think, who are vulnerable individuals living in vulnerable households. Okay? Dimensions of vulnerability. For uh, households, they use uh, five dimensions. Low income, which is below uh, relative poverty line, and debtness, if they have debts which are higher than 40% of household expenditures. Material deprivation, uh, those who don't have savings during last year. Uh, insufficient access to health services, uh, they use indicator, uh, they ask, uh, do you have problems to access to health services? And the second question, if you have uh, problems in access to health services, what was the reason? And they uh, tagged as deprived those who stated that distance to doctor or hospital is a problem in access. And the risk of conf conflict. They asked, do you perceive, uh, how you perceive uh, risk of violent conflict in your municipality? And if people say it's high risk, uh, they uh, assume they are vulnerable. Individual vulnerabilities. Unemployment, uh, if person have uh, current status of unemployed. Low education, uh, less than eight years of schooling and no, no longer in education. Lack of qualification, they did very simple thing. They say, say if you are unskilled uh, manual worker, you, are, have no, uh, you have no enough qualification. That's kind of a very questionable proxy, but they decided to go this way. Insecure employment. If you are employed, but you, uh, you don't pay social contribution, they assume this is unsecure employment because it's most often associated with informal uh, employment and very risky. Uh, in next, uh, st uh, they had two uh, this, uh, surveys, PCA, people-centered analysis. And in the uh, second, uh, they discussed to add some other dimensions. Uh, one is Assets deprivation, uh, they look on uh, housing, mostly housing condition. If uh, they live in a mobile home or a house which is in bad conditions. Uh, next is infrastructure deprivation, like access to water or sanitation. Uh, they also look on limited social network or loneliness. Uh, they ask... Uh, they put a number of problematic situations, like uh, you need immediately 500 euros, uh, you uh, have somebody to help at home, to whom you could address. And they had a number of options, uh, my relatives, my neighbors, my friends, and one option, nobody. Nobody could help me. And they assume that those who have nobody to address to in such a problematic situ situation, they are kind of excluded excluded or deprived from a uh, social network. Uh, on individual, they decided to go for uh, poor health and uh, they discussed if uh, it should be question about current health status, like I have acute health problem during last month or it's a uh, vulnerability. They also had very big discussion on community vulnerability, but I don't know if they came out with something tangible. I think no. But this community vulnerability is a kind of layer which still require attention. That's what they get. Poland. Uh, Poland used very interesting approach uh, to measuring social exclusion, deprivation. Uh, and uh, very interesting thing about Poland is that they introduced uh, local uh, autonomy on very early stage of transition. Uh, they created this so-called gmina, which are municipalities, on very, very early stage, if I'm not mistaken, in 89. And they empower them a lot. They have a lot of, uh, they have a lot of uh, possibilities. They have a certain budget. And they have uh, great autonomy. So they are responsible for situation in their municipalities. <coughs> and as a result, they have a lot of initiatives on this gmina level. Uh, so they designed this... Uh, areas of uh, local social economy, uh, 
which include uh, financial potential, local economic potential, labor market, human capital, social cohesion, uh, good governance, and yes. Uh, uh, they created very, very long list of uh, indicators. They also face this problem that we need limited set of indicators for management and we have longer, uh, we should have longer list of indicators for uh, research purposes. That's why they go in two uh, directions. They had short list, which is mostly for management for participatory discussion of uh, priorities and they have long list for kind of monitoring uh, such. Uh, sources of data. They created so-called regional data bank. Uh, in Yelena Gura, they have special branch of uh, Central Statistical Office, which is responsible for collection of uh, data on all municipalities. So they have a special database uh, in which they track indicators of all municipalities starting from uh, uh, I think starting from 95, uh, but they gradually increase number of indicators and I think uh, number of indicators stable starting from 99. Uh, they also use data uh, based on administrative data and uh, they take data which are available uh, directly from uh, local public administration, different uh, services which are subordinated local public administration like schools, uh, companies and so on and so forth. Uh, in addition, they uh, introduced certain questionnaires and surveys to citizens uh, to get this subjective perception. Uh, and this is an uh, example of comparison of uh, Flok, uh, Flok uh, Gmina with other uh, municipalities on the number of indicators. Uh, this, uh, each, each uh, Figure is a number of indicator which is uh, on this uh, right side. And what is this? Uh, this is something related uh, to expenditures, how much uh, this municipality spent on different areas. This uh, gray, uh, gray area is a average level for peer uh, gminas, yes? So this is, uh, I think it's rural gmina. And this gray area show how much on average this rural gmina spend on these things. This brown thing shows how much this uh, gmina spend on these particular areas, right? <coughs> and uh, again, it show you quite uh, not a black white uh, picture. For instance, on this they spend less than other gminas, and on this they outperform them. Uh, they also look on dynamics of indicators and they compare uh, themselves with themselves a couple of years ago. So are we improving? Are we uh, moving uh, in the right direction? Are we moving in the wrong direction? So, so. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, social exclusion index they created. They also tried to create social exclusion index uh, to pack all these indicators into one um, one figure. And uh, that's quite an amazing uh, list and uh, that's easily, you can end up with such a list uh, which is completely unreadable and long. Uh, but they did a good thing because it's two dimension. They look on labor market exclusion and consumption exclusion and have a limited number of uh, dimension, sub dimensions in each uh, index. I think this report on indicator-based approach to social exclusion is in your reading list and I highly suggest you to have a look on it because uh, they also include quite an interesting review of different approaches to collection of these indicators including urban audit, uh, including uh, other things, how you could collect uh, this. Uh, that's, uh, that's indicators of uh, social exclusion on voivodeship level. So they use this map uh, and uh, they also put these uh, bars of um, components, uh, labor market and consumption exclusion. And interestingly, you could look on this uh, Pomorsky voivodstva where they have quite huge uh, huge labor market exclusion, but limited uh, consumption exclusion. And nearby 
what it was. I don't see. Uh, you see, in this uh, nearby Voivodstvo, they have similar level of absolute exclusion, but uh, less difference in uh, components. Moldova, HDI for Roma. HDI for Roma was calculated as a part of uh, Roma in Moldova report. Uh, it's based on survey of Roma, which follows uh, regional methodology. Uh, it's used classic HDI, no additions, three dimensions, uh, health uh, knowledge incomes, four indicators, life expectancy at birth. Uh, we had no uh, life expectancy of birth for Roma. That's why we re-estimated it's based on child mortality because we get this data from survey. Uh, if you look, there is a, a very strong correlation between child mortality and life expectancy, and on the basis of this figure, it was recalculated. Literacy rate, uh, we get it directly from survey. <coughs> Gross enrollment rate, we get it directly from survey. GDP, we had a problem with GDP because what is GDP for Roma? Uh, so we come back to the idea of what this uh, GDP component of HDI means, and we look on ratio of Roma, non-Roma incomes. We had incomes for, for Roma families and non-Roma families living in close proximity with Roma, and we get a ratio of uh, this income. So if Roma get, if uh, general population get 100 units, how much get Roma? 68, 70, something like that. Uh, why we used ratio? Because we expected that they lie us on incomes, uh, most definitely. But we assume that uh, this uh, error in lying uh, will be the same for Roma and non-Roma, and ratio will be more or less stable. What we get? Uh, we get that difference in life expectancy is not so significant. Uh, this uh, four graphs shows a uh, component of HDI. HDI is rightmost. And here is life expectancy, education, and GDP index. So, difference in life expectancy is not so significant. But difference in education is huge. You see? Uh, it's 0.91 for non-Roma, and uh, 91, right, and 0.64 for Roma. So, this dimension is huge difference. In GDP, difference is not so significant, but the absolute level is quite low, which is kind of problem of whole country. And as a result, this is uh, HDI index for Roma and non-Roma. Right? We use very simple methodology. We had country GDP, right? And we have a ratio of Roma and non-Roma incomes. Let's say non-Roma is 100%, Roma is 60%, right? And we assume GDP for non-Roma, for general population, as equal to GDP for uh, country. We assume uh, GDP for Roma as GDP for country multiplied by this ratio. That's simplistic methodology, but uh, the best you could get. Uh, we discussed if we could uh, put uh, directly figures of incomes and so on and so forth, but we were against it uh, because in this case we have to re-establish uh, cut-off lines, minimum, maximum. Uh, we have no complete trust in these figures, so we decided it's most it's safe. The rule. It's not the just... Yes, it's most defendable methodology. Uh, quality of life. Uh, quality of life survey focus on access and quality of different things and cover issues of employment, family household, economic resources, uh, housing, knowledge education, health, uh, community life. Uh, this is quite a long questionnaire, uh, mostly a subjective questionnaire and uh, it's ask people question like uh, how you satisfied with your education level, how you satisfied with your employment, but also some uh, uh, qualitative, uh, quantitative things like uh, do you have uh, two pairs of shoes or could you go to uh, holidays to the destination you want during your annual holiday or could you have uh, two meals with uh, meat or fish during the week if you wish? Um, 
quality of life survey was done in uh, Croatia, <coughs> but they, uh, they did it kind of quality of life plus. Uh, they use three things. Uh, one was quality of life survey, and they use extended sample of one uh, of eight and a half thousand respondents. They also complement it with a survey of uh, social services providers. So they look not only on perspective of people, but also on perspective of system, how what people uh, in a social protection system thinks about it. And they had a focus group discussion with specific uh, groups. Uh, why it was constructed in such a way? Uh, it was constructed in such a way for very practical purpose. Uh, they use this quality of life survey and additional consultations for uh, so-called joint inclusion memorandum. When countries join the European Union, they have to conclude so-called joint inclusion memorandum, which uh, describe what are the social inclusion problems in this country and how country plan to address them. Croatia at that stage was not candidate country, but they decided to move faster and start preparing this joint inclusion memorandum. And they decided that quality of life survey is good enough to start all these discussions. So uh, they had uh, 20 groups uh, discussions with very various uh, groups who are, could be uh, at risk of social exclusion. It's people with disabilities, uh, parents with children with disabilities, uh, victims of domestic violence, Roma, uh, displaced people, so on and so forth. That's an that's, uh, indicator uh, of subjective poverty in uh, Croatia. Figures show proportion of household who said that they having difficulties in making end meets. Uh, and this is our 28 co countries which uh, were surveyed in this uh, round of uh, European Quality of Life survey. Uh, Croatia is right most and it's 31%. And Bulgaria is uh, on the right scale, it's 58 And on the left is Luxembourg with 3%. Yeah. So this is subjective uh, poverty uh, based on the question uh, how difficult uh, you could make ends meet. Um, by the way, talking about subjective poverty, uh, you should keep in mind uh, one particularity of our region, that subjective poverty rates in our region are typically much, much higher than objective poverty rates. And there, is, uh, there are a lot of uh, works on it, uh, and one of explanations is that uh, subjective poverty rate, uh, subjective poverty, people evaluate their poverty not only on absolute level of incomes, but taking into account uh, also two things. One is inequality, so inequality perceived as subjective poverty. And second, uh, speed of deterioration of situation. Because breakout of Soviet Union was so rapid and the uh, situation plummeted so fast in most of countries, they think that uh, poverty is very high. Uh, they also look on a kind of multiple deprivation and they tagged households as socially excluded. They look, uh, if Macedonia had a lot of different uh, things, they took more uh, simpler approach. They look on three determinants, income. They assume that a household is economically deprived if it's below 60% of median national income, so it's EU lacking uh, indicator of uh, relative poverty. Second was employment deprivation. Uh, if person is uh, unemployment, unemployed or non-active, they're economically deprived. Uh, social cultural deprivation, uh, they look on non-involvement in different uh, activities. Um, and here, again, here are two charts. Uh, these charts show composition of society. 61% uh, have full participation in society, right? So they have no, no they are not excluded neither from uh, uh, incomes, nor from employment, nor from cultural participation. This group is uh, socially excluded. So they are excluded from all three dimensions, right? So they have excluded in all three dimensions. It's 11.5%. Uh, Economic, only economic deprivation is 6%, economic and employment deprivation 1%, and only employment deprivation is close to 20%. Okay. 
So they uh, did this uh, picture to look on different dimensions. Macedonia did this picture of uh, magnitude of deprivation because they had a much more, uh, much more deprivation dimensions. Okay? Uh, they also look on a level, because they increased sample, they make sample uh, representative on a subnational level, on the level of counties. And they find out that the differences in uh, social exclusion is much higher than difference in GDP. So if uh, GDP, uh, rate, rate, uh, GDP for most uh, advanced region is three times higher than <coughs> for less advanced region, social exclusion is 16 uh, times higher. Yeah? So the difference is quite uh, high. Uh, and if in general something like 10%, 11% are excluded, in uh, six most uh, deprived regions, uh, they have exclusion which is close to 25%. So they use this analysis for uh, making this joint inclusion memorandum, uh, and also they have quite good uh, report on uh, social exclusion. Okay, uh, that was the last slide, and uh, questions? No questions. You are impressed. <laughs> <laughs> okay.